Dr. Bruce, welcome you back to the Levity Zone. This is the third and last audience Q&A session for Ojai Salon number two, our podcast 13. We continue on late into that night of June of 2013 with Dennis, Jeff, and Dr. Bruce delving deeply into the influence of the mad mesmeric monkey on civilization. The mesmeric power of the mostly male guru the religious sect, the business or government honcho, and other so-called leaders may be one of the greatest diversions in history from our path to personal freedom and to making a better world by 2050. Where did this all come from? Perhaps there was a fully female-centered world of 200,000 years ago before history's greatest secret was revealed. The secret of how a baby was really conceived. Did our first conscious mother count the moons and reveal that knowledge? With that knowledge, did the first patriarchal manic male monkey wrest power from Eve, kill the sacred kudu, and kidnap the future child, heading north with the spear of power and bloodlust? This whole podcast is aimed at the 21-year-old, the ones that are not the culture that you've encountered of the entitlement kids, the ones that are really oh. seeking, the ones that really are yeah. aware. As I was saying to Jeff earlier, like, we're done for. They are going to make the change, right? All we can do is tell stories and put stuff out. Well, we're done for, right? They're going to have to change the world. It's not us. All, all we can do is give them some wisdom and some insights and yeah, yeah. help them ask the questions and help them avoid the pitfalls, and that's about it. We're just too worried about our our homes and our infrastructure and our our old bones and our aches and pains, and (laughs) they've got that power curve that they're still going up. It's funny because I I hit like 49 and 50. It's like, oh, I'm I'm seriously come off the power curve now. (laughs) That's it. And when Mother died, it was like, it's about what's left, not what is in front. You know, get going, do what you can with what's left. I'm 73. I used to be a Catholic priest. You were a Catholic priest? Yes, and a monk. You were a monk. In the order of, of Pope Francis. I mean, oh, he's a, yeah, he's a Franciscan, right? Yeah. Yes. Oh, no, he's a Jesuit, sorry. Wrong, he's, uh, he's a Jesuit. Anyway, I was a Franciscan. So I got out of that at age 30, and then I had a worldly hiatus of about 10 years. Then I went into another, uh, this time a New Age movement, with a charismatic guru. I was in that for 20 years. Wow. Was that Dauphin John? No, it was John Roger from L.A. And then um, then I got myself out of that. They kicked me out, actually, because I opposed them publicly. So you, um, you went through all I've this. gone through these cults, <laughs> yeah. and I can, I can taste them and smell them now. So, wow. So, I, so when, I, when, I, when I was describing with the Enlightenment people, I, mean, just, I, I can feel it. The... Uh, like the Ken Wilber people, you can feel the cult thing coming on. Yeah, I mean, but I read, I read all of Wilber's book, books and stuff. You know, I, uh, it's, uh, you know, all I see what, uh, I, mean, I don't know if I'm saying I'm right, but, but I can feel it. There was that whole phase of these guys, like the guy who did Est and yeah, the, all that, all the, that stuff. The human potential. And then, yeah, that's great. <clears throat> and then I was in that for 20 years. And I was ordained. They had a ministry, too. Wow. I was ordained uh, in that... And, Would you go to Esalen and do workshops there? And stuff? I did a couple of times, yeah. 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 Uh-huh. And uh, then I had to you know, work myself out of that. You know, so that we're, we, we're snookered again. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah, all, just... all, the, the reoccurring theme through them all seems to be the enhancement of personal power. Right? It's like yeah. getting, yeah. like learning how to become a better if taxpayer. You're, you're or getting something, something out yeah. of the course. Of course, yeah, I guess there's no end. The mind just will keep taking as many logs on its fire as you want to pile on, right? Yeah, right. yeah. yeah it's it's just another so, build up of another self corrupting, mm-hmm. word based, mind based, yeah, uh, collapse to be, mm-hmm. and 
whether it be yeah, just only slightly more finessed or yeah. multifaceted than the one before. Yeah. It. Just, oh no, that's got to be. That's what everything's it's led the, up to. It's the pure thing, <laughs> but it's headed straight into its own corruption. It's sort of like the sitcom, you know, where they stop right before the guy's going to go off the cliff, so you'll be sure to tune into the next episode. You know, the next episode, yeah, and yeah. you never get to the next episode. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But of course that evolution favors those systems because they get 22,000 people and then the next time they get 50,000 they get the money and then they build the power and they build their organization and people raise children within the tradition and they, right. you know, Darwinian natural selection builds those communities. It's funny because Krishnamurti was talking about R.P. Kaushik, this Indian teacher I'm putting on the Levity Zone. Mm -hmm. He's saying, you know, any formula for gain, you know, any book that's sold to you, any line of reasoning and structure is a, is a diversion and takes you away from the fundamental truth of yourself and your being and mm -hmm. having that opening. All these things take you away the opposite direction. Yeah, for those who know, no words are necessary, right? It's not right. going to be found in some kind of description that's freighted with the limitations of the the dominator model, right? I mean, right. It's what we need is an entirely what Kaushik points out is this semantical is, structure. Is look inside. How do you react to things? That is your beginning of your your teaching. own inner authority. Your own, mm -hmm. yeah, and it's like oh. yeah, no one needs to have. You don't need to pay anyone to know what's true and real for you. Yeah. I mean, I I didn't have the wherewithal or the money or the time to. You know, when I was attempted to be indoctrinated into Scientology and everything else that's gone since then, the way I always ended up was just sitting somewhere, you know, with no real teachers or guides or instruction, mm. just stopping mm. everything. And for many years here, that's what I did. Mm. I just stopped everything. And I realized in that process that you don't have to be smart, uh, good-looking, wealthy, connected, educated, like I didn't need to be, to really start to know what my own personal truth was and what seemed kind of mm -hmm. right and wrong <laughs> to me personally. And I realized that that's what all of these gurus and traditions that are trying to teach you is a self-discovery process. And what I realized is that that that's available and only ever arose in my life when I stopped everything I was doing mm. to try to achieve it. Mm. That the things that I was doing to attempt to achieve it were actually the impediments to it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Dennis, you, you have a lifetime I've, of experience. I've, of, yes. Yeah. I've, I've, uh, yes, I've gone through that. Yeah. It's, it's really tricky I and mean, it's really subtle. Um, well, then what do you do? I mean, once you arrive at your, at your that own personal truth and you know what feels right and wrong and and what you like and don't like and what's true, there's not really any money to be made off of that. Well, you I mean, know, if it's authentic, like how does that fit? How do you then, how or then are you not just sort of a sort of like a dropout at that point. How do you integrate well, that here's, understanding here's into a, a life? <laughs> what, what I'm trying to do now with this, the levity zone, I'm trying to do my own personal liberation mm -hmm. at the same time as I started this podcast, which is not just about my voice, it's about other voices and the conversation being the most powerful medium, I believe, that mm -hmm. exists. And when I was here in April... The day before we did our first Ojai Salon here, I had been through a, a tremendously powerful experience in, in Santa Barbara with a group of men that mm, heal each I other. I remember you were, yeah, were they speaking he, about that. They heal each other. It was a very intense yeah. weekend. And there was this great wind blowing through the valley here. And I lay down on Riverview in the grass, and I experienced a complete release, a complete freedom liberation from myself, mm -hmm. this was explosion almost out of the body. And before coming here, I walked tonight for salon number two, I walked down there, I mm -hmm. found the impression in the dry grass 
where I had laid. I said, I, I will still be there. And I lay down in that impression in the grass to say, yes, I am still free. I, understand. This, I look up and the grass blades are now dry and they have a nice smell to them, but I felt viscerally that freedom is still there. Yeah. And so the dance that I'm doing is to do all these practices and exercises to get my freedom, and there are many different ones, at the same time as talking about that and, and listening to others talk about their practices and somehow in this great whirl of of things that, that somehow a new world can, can come out of it. But mm -hmm. it's, if, you know, it's like Ken Wilber and all these other folks, to his own admission, he talks about, you know, there's phases when I, I look back at what I did and I'm, I'm ashamed of the things that I did and they were mm -hmm. all ego-based. Mm -hmm. And this is like, wait a minute, that's like 80% of your career, buddy, <laughs> that you were not authentic. Right. So how do we know that you've really come through because you actually have to now recant. You have to recant and say, well, here's where I was wrong. Ram Dass did this. You know, this mm -hmm. is why Ram Dass is so cool because not only does wow. he talk about earlier phases That's in his right. life, where yeah, he, yeah. but he talks about today when he feels like I'm a schmuck still. Oh, see, a, that's great. That's honesty. It's that's honesty. Yeah. Well, he had a stroke. Mm -hmm. And he had cared for his father who had had a stroke. Mm -hmm. now, get this. He had to care for his father until his father died. But then what happens, Ram Dass takes two medications in the wrong time, in the wrong order, and he has a stroke and he's in a wheelchair. Oh, really? Yeah, he did it to himself. Wow. And so what, is, what happens to this man? He has a book out now called Still Here. You know, his original mm -hmm. great book is called Be, Be Here Now. Mm -hmm. The new one's called Still Here. <laughs> <laughs> and, and he talks about when he found himself paralyzed in the wheelchair like his father and he said, I became a schmuck, I became negative and all the things in 35 years of spiritual training and talking about it <laughs> went out the freaking window <laughs> and I had to start again oh. in a new reality. It just went out the window. And, and there were times, he talks about times in his life, there was a time where he was invited somewhere on the big island of Hawaii to this community and he went out and he was like in a hurry and blah, 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 blah. And he got there and there were all these people sort of sitting quietly on their mats. And he sat down and he just started to fill the space. Like blah, 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 blah. All this the same kind of what Kaushik talks about, the high risk of being a public figure because the audience, here is your story and there's some authenticity to it. The next time they want a little more, and a little more, and a little more until it's it's like a huge circus, and you're totally out of integrity. Mm. And so yeah, you've turned into a commodity. You turn into a commodity. <laughs> so Ram Dass, Now here's what happens to him. It all ends up having they have be a package with a little you're bow a around it. <laughs> That's right. And, you know, it's on sale today. If you buy it now, and buy now. Before. So what happens? The community listens for like a couple of hours and then one of them puts their hand up and said, excuse me, but this is not the Ram Dass that we have read. Basically, you're just spouting off. We want to hear uh, some of the things you said earlier in your life. We don't know what you're doing right now, <laughs> who you are. We just want to point out that something ain't right here. And he was like totally taken down. Mm -hmm. I was like, you're right. I was just spouting off and and let's just be still. And I'm really sorry. I want to apologize. And it took him completely back. <laughs> it says, this ain't the Ram Dass we thought we knew. Who are you? <laughs> you're not Ram Dass. Mm. Or something's happened to you. Let's pull your cord and your rip yeah. cord here. <laughs> yeah, the <laughs> test is like in Course of Miracles, they say this only ever... Cries for help or expressions of love. That's the only thing that's ever going oh, on. That's beautiful. Any time. Oh, yeah. that's, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yeah, you summarized it all right there. Wow. <laughs> so um, how do we? How do we? Uh, you know, first a person has to recognize that they're crying for help, and that's a difficult thing to do. Yeah. And then there has to be some help. 
<laughs> right? I mean, <laughs> in the case of Ramdas, it was people basically punctured his balloon. Yeah, right. They were the help. And so he was crying, there. and he was crying out. He was crying out for, out for help. And yeah, he got it. He got it, and he stayed there for days. Oh, so I had the places to go out and I realized, no, this is my major <laughs> teaching. They've just deflated my whole balloon. And, and these people are going to help me. And then he fell into their arms weeping, basically. Because he become great. this talking thing, this robot. And they finally, they, no more robot. He said, oh my God, it's been terrible. And I've been so inauthentic and I'm, I'm a schmuck again. And <laughs> well, we love him for that. <laughs> Oh, that's a great, a great story. Yeah, he had a tough, he had a tough challenge, Ram Dass, to live up to his image. You know, it's like how could he possibly? And when women were pulling at his clothes, he realized, oh my God, you know, I'm just a schmuck from like Worcester or wherever he's from, and and women think I'm a bodhisattva and all this. And anyway, oh. but yeah, so people get into influencer positions and then they become the manic monkey again. Mm -hmm. This is why I just I went up to a conference called the Women's Visionary Congress. It was two weekends ago in Petaluma. And these are really wise women. You'd love them. Some of them are psychedelic women, some of them are shamanic healers, but they're so grounded. And they have twenty younger women that they're kind of tutoring who are working the mm -hmm. conference. Mm -hmm. shamanic, younger, powerful women in their 20s, early mm -hmm. 20s. Some of them. And I was really nervous. I was one of two men invited to present there. Mm -hmm. And I just, I rehearsed. And I, everything, I cleared my heart. I did my yoga and my breathing in the morning. I asked all of them for help. And I did my story dance in the middle of their circle. And I got the stamp of approval in my little manic monkey head, forehead. But they're the highest order. These are the women who've been through it all from you know, the 60s, and they've been through mm -hmm. unbelievable stuff. And so you know, the power trips of men, everything, they've seen it all. It's all just rubbish to them, and they can see through everything. So they're probably a source community for what you're talking about. I'd like to get, what's it? Women's Visionary Congress. I, and I told them, you are the platform you need to express your power more. And they, they do it in a subtle, behind-the-scenes way, but they're getting stronger and stronger. This is their seventh meeting, their seventh Congress. Wow, great, yeah. And uh, I said, you guys in the future, we ain't. And, and what, I, what I told them is, if I become a good storyteller, which is my ambition... Oh, yeah, describe that. Well, I told story, them... Uh, dancing story or something. Yeah, something. I moved around. I created this oval... Yeah. Shape and they arranged their chairs, and then I could move and I could make eye contact with everyone, and I could change and I could look over to this. Group and you're telling and a story. In the, in I was telling a story. Yeah, and they they loved the story. It was Whoa. a custom tuned story for them, Whoa. and they gave me the stamp. But I basically, to several of the senior women, I said, frankly, if I become a, a, an, an avatar or an exemplar able to tell stories that matter to you, I would rather source my stories in your community where I tell you the story and you check it out. And because males will tend to go off the deep end and add all this nonsense to their stories, weird conspiracy theories and darknesses and whatever, they go yeah. off the deep end. And I would rather be based in a community that helps me develop yeah. the story and then I represent the community to some degree. My idea is that something prior to motherhood, and that's loverhood. Hmm. In other words, a woman, before she's a mother, she's a lover. Hmm. And the love, the love is the basic philosophy or the big idea behind it, even a much bigger idea than the patriarchal philosophy. Which yeah, is, it seems like when a couple have a child, that the relationship of the couple cease to be with each other at that point, hmm. and they seem to be in mm. service to the child, but it mm. seems like what's really needed is that the child needs to have the modeling of the relationship between yeah. the man and the woman, and that's not what they're getting, because there's yeah. like somehow some distortion in those relationships has arisen, mm -hmm. and, the, and yeah. the couple no longer relate with each other, 
and become completely in service to the child and lose their connection with each other, yeah. which is what the child needs yeah. more than anything, because that's what they need to model. Yeah, that's from. a good, very good analysis mm -hmm. of the problem. The loving between, if it's a couple relationship, uh, needs to continue. If that drops out, it's not going to do the child any good. Yeah. Because the child came from that, and the child needs that modeling. Yeah. I so, and, bit, and despite even a parent's best efforts, they, right. in their attempt to do so much good mm -hmm. for the child, they end up abandoning the thing that the child yeah. needs the most. That line of thinking leads to another thing that I address in the love government, and that is, why, why does that loving stop? Again, the pressures of the modern life. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, and, the, and, and part of the problem is the nuclearization mm. of the couple. The couple is a nuclear couple. So my idea of a utopian ideal is that in the love originating clans or groups, uh, the sex, sexual practices were not what we have, nuclear practices. The coupling arrangement, mm -hmm. which turns out to be this and this and this, this coupling business. It was open, communal, um, well-governed. In fact, what Terence McKenna talks about is that, in fact, the males didn't know where their genetic line was. It was just coming out of this pool. So there wasn't this ownership competition. Yeah, it wasn't like my children. It wasn't my, my children. You woman, didn't know. My no, it didn't matter because it was it was a matrilineal system. The mother knew who her child was, but the father didn't matter because she probably had sex with yep. many people in the community. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. And so the fathers didn't care either. But then women women made a big mistake, you know. <laughs> they figured out that the father had something to do with the conception of the child. You know, they began, they began to realize uh, nine they, months. They and, counted the moons. Yeah, yeah. So they and did then, the math. And then they told the men about it. Big mistake. Oh. The men realized, ah. It was the mystery. I'm the one that creates the child. So, so they, that's <laughs> so the greatest takes secret. Over. Oh, <laughs> and he, 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 so the greatest secret ever spilled was the secret of how the yeah, man that was the big, yeah. figures out. There's and a then, very, yeah. Then there's because a preservation of... Only the of, women knew. Huh? Only the women Initially, knew. Initially, the women would have known because they, they, their bodies told them, the moon told them, the nine months, they would have known. They probably kept the so secret. So without revealing me. that nine months, then there would be no way to connect the, the event of right. the conception with the birth. Right, exactly. The men would, <laughs> but then the, when the men realized... They were. They had a part of procreation. Hmm. And by that time, they that's were all, when the, that's when the, the knowledge. That's when the birth of knowledge. Yeah, that, right. that, that, so was, that was the, yeah. the apple. But they they, they turned it. Yeah. They turned it into a power tool. That knowledge. Knowledge is power. So when they knew that they were, so they, they started becoming interested in one particular child exactly. to yeah. the exclusion that's of all others. That's my children. child. No. Uh, and I'm going to educate that child yeah. on my values. It's yeah. going to work for me. Exactly. And my right. kingdom will be handed down to that right. individual so, instead of to the group. So maybe so in your story of the South Africa coastline, so it was the first father who figured out that his little precocious son was his. Uh -huh. He instills in this son this sense of primacy. Yeah. yeah. Then that son goes out and kills the kudu. Yeah. which is the sacred animal, and brings it back. Yeah, that because, that now, because that the, son has that relationship with that father and wants to right. impress that father, gain that there father's you go. Father, there you favor. Go. So, and like, that's the birth of neuroses. That's the birth of neuroses. Right. And then <laughs> what happens is the women get so upset, they throw them out of the community. But then in the night, the father and the son sneak, and they kidnap some of the women to take, and then they head north. And that's the beginning of yeah. the patriarchal manic monkey. Where there's your, there's your <laughs> oh, story. That's part of the story. That's, that, uh, it's a, it's a wonderful a story, isn't it? I mean, it's a good one. Yeah. It's a good one, yeah. Yeah, it would certainly explain the present situation because if you plot a trajectory out from there, how you would arrive at this starts to be a little more understandable. Yeah. So if I if I if it's okay, can I use this story as of well? Yeah, because yes. I think I'll tell. So the we story. can blame the women for this. <laughs> well, the women. <laughs> yeah, the women. Yeah, the women. They they naively, but they, they kidnapped the women. In, in their innocence, they share <laughs> sure, information they shared that information. they didn't would didn't know would be abused. And knowledge is power. So knowledge is power. And so the women that are kidnapped are their first subjugated women in in the modern humans. Yeah. And they are taken away from their mothers so they don't get the knowledge that their mothers had. 
That's, and that's the breaking that, of that. that. That's when you break that matrilineal thing. So the woman stayed with her mother, and then the men came to live with the mother. But when you take the woman out of away from her mother and her clan, mm. and, and she is forced to go with live with the in-laws, she's under the power of, of them. She, she, she loses her, her so place this, in nature. You know? So that group that went north was that first example of women torn out of the matriarchal line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so here we are in the early 21st century, and the matriarchal power is reasserting itself like this wonderful, glorious collective is starting to wake up and reassert itself. And now you have 7 billion, you know, 3.9 billion women, and their power is coming back. And so if you tell a story that's this powerful, and you say to them, this is what you're recovering, your women compatriots, your women sisters that were mm -hmm. sitting around that shoreline, mm -hmm. and they were from the Ur Mother, Mm -hmm. And they were super knowledgeable, mm -hmm. and the knowledge was stolen, mm -hmm. and then the great animal was stolen, and mm -hmm. the blood, and then they stole you, mm -hmm. and they took you away. Mm -hmm. And now it's time for you to reassert your mm -hmm. central role in the world. And so for the world of 2050, which we start out the evening mm -hmm. for, this so, is how we get so to this, that world of 2050. This would explain yeah. now why as the women are reasserting that power, they're getting so much support from the legal system, financially. But you know, know one of the reasons they're getting it is because the men reached the limits of bloodlust. They built the thermonuclear arsenal, which they oh. could not use. No. They could not use. They were stopped at the threshold. Yeah. So the male reached the limit of bloodlust. So LevityZone.com is going to be the mad monkey set loose here from yeah. Ojai, California. Do the yourself. greatest work. Be the greatest levity. Free yourself. Let's levitate the planet. Through these conversations, we create an energy here of levity in wow. the zone. That's going to bring in all kinds of people into this. Yeah. And this, this is going to be a bombshell on the internet. Get in the zone, right? When you get, like an athlete gets in the zone, the normal perception drops away. This is going to happen with the levity zone. Yeah. We're going to be in the zone, and all this shit is going to drop off. They oh, want to be in the zone. They're going to be attracted to the zone. This okay. creates a type of vacuum. It's a strange attractor. There's a line in Shakespeare, Malvolio is this delusionary person. The, you know, the great patriarch, and he's... He's being observed by these the, the three other people. He's saying, uh, th this is the line. What? 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 Shall he live? <laughs> see, if you get a conversation going, that's the response that I would see would be really good. And they hear this conversation going, what? 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 What do you say? What? What? Shall he live? Shall he live? What did he say? He can't say that. Yeah, shall I live? Shall, shall I, I live? Shall we live? Free of this heavy burden. Can we let these people live if they're talking like that? This is levity. It's levity. We're in the zone. So this is for the young people out there who need this, because for them to go into life without getting slammed, you know, this uh, I, us older manic yeah. monkeys are telling them. We're the, we're the, we're the monkey. Look, get the monkey. Huh? I have a 20-year-old son. Mm -hmm. he, probably, he's, he, he probably thinks, be into this. He thinks I'm an old fogey, but... Now, after tonight. But after this... <laughs> See, if he's going to think you're pretty cool now. Yeah, if if if, if that if this type of conversation would turn him on, mm -hmm. catch his attention, then you know you got some life. Well, maybe he will come to the next uh, Ohio yeah. Salon number three. Yeah, then he can come because we need young people. Yeah, get in the zone. Would the return of a world grounded on elder women finally tame the mad mesmeric monkey? while bringing out the best in him or her. In the 21st century, will we finally witness the waning of male bloodlust as he puts down the spear? We thank the restless monkey for walking the world, spreading the genes of our mitochondrial mother, but now need him to come home to the calm shores and warm hearth of the women who gave him life. Join us for future salons and continue the exploration of this story. Music for the second Ojai Salon series was provided by Steve Murtaugh.
find his compositions and bonus unused outtakes of this conversation and all voice, artwork, and more contributed to all of our podcasts for reuse in your projects at www.levityzone.com. And don't forget, subscribe to us on iTunes by searching for the words Levity Zone.